Good morning, <laughs> and welcome to worship for Sunday, December 5th. My name is Ruth Lummox, and it's my privilege to welcome those of you who are here in the building with us and those of you who will be joining us either via live stream online right now or a little bit later through our Facebook or YouTube feed. Special thanks also to Jackie Nichols and Diane, who is in the booth, and to Deb, who is always the face that greets you at the door and reminds you about sanitizing and all those other things that we need to do to, in order to be here and to be safe with one another. We are also grateful to a few other folks who have pre-recorded to be part of today's service. And so we give thanks to the Deanna and Lily, who you'll get to see in a few moments as our Advent candle lighters and to Mary Lister, who read scripture. We are also grateful to the peoples of First United, who have made this space and this ministry possible. But we are grounded on this good earth that our Indigenous neighbors have tended and cared for for thousands of generations. We live amongst and to the north of the Nahiwan, the Sundance culture, the people of the Plains Cree, we are in the Battle River watershed, part of that North Saskatchewan River area, Métis Region 4. And we are responsible to and with Treaty 6. If you'd like to learn more about First United, you can check out our website or the Facebook page. And our YouTube channel also has regular videos for both godly play and worship. Do we have any birthdays to celebrate this week? I was very quiet on my email this week about birthdays and no anniversaries. Ah, Don and Marilyn are celebrating an anniversary. So anybody else? Then we will sing happy anniversary to Marilyn and Don. Happy anniversary to Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Marilyn and Dawn. Happy anniversary to you. So that might like warrant a cake or a pie. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe that one pie won't make it till Christmas. We do have pies for sale, yes. Some of you are aware of that. So we had a small group of folks in to roll out the remainder of the rhubarb, and that was good. This week, also, the Carol Fest will be online on Tuesday night on both Facebook and YouTube at 7 o'clock. Please don't come to the building. There won't be anybody here. But we will be here on Wednesday and Thursday mornings if you want to drop off a donation. And you can also do that directly to the charity or local agency of your choice. Jackie's concerts are also coming up next Sunday evening, Women in Song at 7 o'clock on the Sunday evening and Wednesday night at 7.30 for Cantare Yuvalate, the mixed voice choir that is getting started again this fall. And so lots of good music coming your way in the next week or so. We'd invite the prayers for the Lummox family as we grieve the death of Miles's brother suddenly this week and also for Heidi and her family as they grieve the sudden death of a nephew. It is a difficult time to be mourning. It is always difficult to mourn, but particularly in this Christmas season. I would invite you to take a deep breath, to know that the Holy One holds us in this time together, that we hold one another as a community of faith that is both physically and virtually present, connected by the spirit that is not limited by our understandings of time and space. And we remember the one who's coming into the world. We honor with that reminder about light. Are you ready to worship? 
Well, then I'll invite us to join together in singing number 93 from the first volume of the Klusmeyer Anthologies, Let Love From In The Manger Heal. We'll be singing the first and fourth verses, which will be on screen. It's a newer one, so I'm going to remind Jackie just to play that whole thing through for us so we hear what it sounds like again, but you guys had it pretty good last week and we still have a few more weeks to practice, so here we go. That's good. You even remembered that little musical interlude that gives us all a chance to catch our breath. The call to worship is printed responsively, and I will invite you to join in the larger white font if you want. If you're watching at home, I'll invite you to do that as well. Or if you have people within your household with whom you want to share those parts, feel free to do so. When our lives are turned upside down, we turn to you, O oh God. When we are separated from all that is dear to us, we turn to you, O oh God. When chaos threatens the order that comforts us, we turn to you, O oh God. When we seek signs of hope, we turn to you, O oh God, and you turn us into disciples, that we might turn this world right side up. What do you do when an angel interrupts your day? You stop. What do you do when an angel speaks? You listen. An angel interrupted Mary's routine. She stopped. She listened. Everything changed. The angel had a message for Mary. You will have God's child. But Mary wondered, how can I be the mother of God's child? The angel said, don't be afraid. Trust in God. We light this candle to remind us that God works in unexpected ways. When we open up to God, hope is born. We light this candle as a reminder of the peace that comes when we trust in God. <laughs> when we say yes to God, amazing things happen. Let us pray together. Peace, longing God, speak to us and we will listen. What changes do you have in mind for us? What peace do we need to shape on your behalf? May our worship and our living open wide your grace and justice. May we move ever closer and more deeply into the mystery of Christmas. Amen. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the good of my heart is great and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring Why 
My name is Mary Lister, and I'm reading scripture this morning. Our first scripture reading is Isaiah 41 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass. All their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Our second scripture reading is from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to be me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. We are a part of this story. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to us. We'll just give Diana a sec- There we go. <laughs> She's doing really well, and there's a whole pile of videos that go with today's service, so and we're grateful that there's someone there to help support us. May the meditations of my mouth and all of our hearts be acceptable to God, our rock and our redeemer. In this gathered community, 
May we know ourselves beloved and called to share that love beyond these walls, beyond the walls of our homes, into those places that ache and yearn to know the good news. God is with us. Amen. So this joke I found, and it comes with a little bit of a pandemic disclaimer. It was obviously something that must have happened before, in those days when they could. There was this young couple that hosted a large dinner party <laughs> with people outside their household, obviously. And once everybody was seated, one of the mums said to one of the children, well, would you like to say the blessing? And the child was a little bit shy and said, well, you know, I wouldn't know what to say. And the mom, one of the mums said, well, just say whatever mommy says. And the child responded, dear Lord, why on earth did I invite so many people to dinner? <laughs> Perhaps you've had those moments. <laughs> When sometimes life, through no fault of our own, we just find ourselves overwhelmed. Other times it is of our choosing. Maybe we've said yes to one too many projects or they all seem to come due at the same time. We've offered to do a favor for someone only to discover that it actually involves a little more <laughs> than what was originally explained or something that looked like a really good idea. <laughs> and it turns out not to be so. Christmas, Christmas can also be a time when it's easy to feel overwhelmed. And although we are still a little bit less busy than we have been in other years, it seems like it takes so much more energy just to do what we used to do. There are still gifts to find and wrap, extra expenses on budgets that are already stretched a little thinly. The added challenge of trying to plan travel or gatherings when we're not quite sure what things will look like in two weeks and how do we meet both our relationship needs and ensure compliance with those public health measures to keep people safe. Add in a little bit of grief if we're one of those families marking a first Christmas without a loved one or the longing for what was. And then the minister emails to ask if someone would do an Advent reading or someone asks if you come and help package up Rancho Vignola when they ever get here. And so what about our faith? Where do we fit that in? in our often busy lives, apart from this one hour when we gather in worship or to watch at home, has it ever become that oh, one more thing that's just too much? I wonder if you've ever felt like God asks too much of you. There's that saying, right? God never gives us any more than we can handle. And I've always added to it, yes, but I just wish God didn't have such a high opinion of me. Mary was at least in her teens when it would have happened for her. And we can only imagine she grew up in a devout Jewish family. Luke does tell us that her relatives, Zechariah and Elizabeth, were faithful and lived according to God's word. But then it happens to Mary. She has this vision and, and she's pregnant and she's not even married yet and try to wrap your head around what all of that might mean. And likewise, Joseph has that moment of what do I do with this? And Matthew's gospel tells us a bit about his story and reaction that he at the very least has good intentions to just set her aside quietly and annul the marriage before it starts. And then he gets his own angel vision, even though he would have been well within his rights to leave Mary to raise the child on her own. 
to bear the ridicule and the shame that having a child out of marriage meant in those days, still does a little bit today. But to have the right to do something does not always make it right or faithful to do. And Joseph is a faithful person. And instead, he does that faithful thing and he says yes to God. And he trusts that perhaps God might actually know a little bit more about what is about to happen than he does. Something that is easy for us to forget. And Mary, too, might have wished that angel had gone to someone else. She could have done herself harm in the hopes of losing that pregnancy or hidden herself away until the child was born and perhaps passed it off as a younger sibling or as a cousin. But there is more to Mary than anyone knows. Too many artists, I think, have painted that Mary as meek and submissive. And as much as I love the song, the angel Gabriel, that Cantare sings, those words, then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head, just stick in my voice every time I'm asked to sing them. But our yes to God needs to mean something, and it means nothing if we can't say no. And so I believe that Mary had that choice. And that the Mary who sings Magnificat is as bold and as radical as the God who calls her to change the world with a child. And so Mary sets out, as we hear at the end of this particular passage and leading a little bit into next week's reading, to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Perhaps she's looking for some of that peace and comfort to find the strength to live out her yes. And oddly enough, she discovers it in the care that she offers Elizabeth during her pregnancy. I wonder where you find the comfort and the strength to live your yes to God. We need those places, like Mary did, of peace and comfort, friends like Elizabeth who encourage and support us to live out our faithful choices, to live according to God's will, not just our own. And it may be in those times that we spend alone in prayer or with a trusted friend, those conversations that happen into the wee hours of the morning sometimes, It may be during worship or in creating something with our hands, working outside, going for a walk. However that happens or works for us, we all need those times and spaces to kind of get our head back in the right frame, to regain our sense of perspective and purpose as God's people. And then we need to live into our answer, whatever that might be, to God. Just as that time came for Mary to come back from the hill country into her own community and to live into what that meant, we are called to live our faith not in isolation, but in the day-to-day activities with our family and our relationships and our communities. And the good news is that this same God who seems at times to ask so much of us also offers us so much. It is the same God that we meet in the prophet Isaiah's writings about comfort, comfort my people. It is this same God who speaks peace beyond understanding, who offers us the promise of life in all its abundance. The God who we say when we recite the words of our creed has created and is creating. 
And I don't know about your experience, but in my experience, most curiously, I have discovered that when I feel most overwhelmed, it's not because of something God's asked me to do. And it's usually because I haven't listened to God <laughs> or asked God for help. And when I start from that position of, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do in the midst of this situation? Or help me to be the presence that I need to be here and now. Then the way forward becomes more clear. On this second Sunday in Advent, we light a candle for peace. And what we do this week to shape peace moves that ritual into meaning in our lives and gives it form and substance. So as we give thanks for our own places of peace and comfort, we remember the places in our lives and in our world where peace is still a dream. And we add our voices and our labors to those who are making peace a possibility for others. You might choose this coming week to light a candle and place it in your window as we mark the International Day for Human Rights. You might write a Christmas card for Amnesty International to someone who will be imprisoned as a prisoner of conscience over the holiday season. You might choose a gift with vision that enables some peace and well-being to come not only to different parts of Canada, but around the world. Or you may just choose to have a simpler, less packaged Christmas this year to ease up a bit on some of that waste and destruction that happens to our planet. And we gather at this table where we find the strength to say yes once again to God. This table is a place of comfort and hospitality, but it's meant to be more than just comfort food that adds a few extra pounds around our middle. It is a table where we are reminded who we are and whose we are. children of a God who says come to me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest a God for whom that all means all so it is a place of hospitality that feeds us so we in turn can feed others and practice that hospitality to say yes to God is to practice that welcome for all of God's relations. Imagine, I mean, what if our prejudice kept us from sitting at table with, a, with Jesus simply because of his swarthy skin or strange accent? Or what if our immigration laws closed the door on a family like Mary and Joseph who were just looking for a safe place to raise their family. More than the comfort of singing our familiar carols or keeping ourselves so busy we don't have to think, Advent invites us to stop, to pay attention, so that we're ready to say yes when God comes to us. And we might not get an angelgram. You know, that just might not be our thing. But we will likely be asked to be a good friend to someone, to listen to someone, to share as generously with others as we share with those whom we know and love. And Advent gives us time to be ready. To pause long enough for some of those experiences, those strange angels who show up unexpected, who not only ask much of us, but who offer us so much more. 
and remind us of just how much we are loved. Mary says yes to God, knowing it will turn her world inside out, but also hoping that it will turn the tables on the powerful, that the hungry will be filled, and good things, good things will come to those who wait. This is the God whose coming Mary sings yes to. And so may our yes join that angel chorus that drenches the hills and valleys with good news and peace to all whom we meet. I wonder how your yes to God will unfold this week. Amen. There is a place where dreams come alive and peace is real. Where the hungry are fed. We're gathered around it. There is a place where the future makes sense, where lions and lambs lie down together. The powerful, the powerless shake hands. We are gathered around it. There is a place where the broken is made whole, where new life is possible, where no one waits, but everyone is served by the world's servant. It is this place where heaven and earth touch, the table of life, where God becomes human and dwells among us, reconciling and making new. Welcome to the table of the Good Shepherd, where all are welcome in faith and reverence and thanksgiving. The peace of Christ be with you. I'll invite us to join together in singing Dream a Dream. The words are on screen to number 158 in the More Voices. Imagine. 
I'll invite us to join together in the words of the prayer of thanksgiving, which are on screen. Again, you're welcome to join in that larger white font or to read the whole thing at home if that's easier. Heck, you could even do that here if you really want. God, you are with us in sorrow and in joy, at work and at play. Our hearts rejoice at your coming amongst us. With all the earth, we turn to you. God of all people and places, you grace us with faith, love, and hope. We thank you. You send us prophets and angels to prepare a way. We would rather have our own way. Speak peace to our fear. Humble our arrogance. Reassure us with your hope when all seems to bitterness or despair. You call us to love beyond the comfortable, inviting us to risk peace and seek justice. You reveal yourself in Jesus, the one we call Christ, who is for us the way, the truth, and the life. May we, like Jesus, proclaim your love, which is good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. May we weep with those who weep and dance with those who rejoice. Strengthened by your light, may we, like Mary and Joseph, risk much in your service. Inspired by your light, may we, like the shepherds and angels, share the good news. Don't be afraid. Emmanuel, God is with us. May we, like filled with your light, <laughs> may we, like Christ, choose service and life in the face of betrayal and suffering. We gather together, seeking strength to live your vision. We offer to you, O oh God, the joys and cares of our living. In communion with all those who have gone before and the generations who will follow, we sing your praise. As we break together the bread of life and drink from the cup of blessing, we proclaim together the mystery of faith. Loving creator, we offer you our words and our lives in this symbol of bread. And we offer up our laughter and suffering in the cup of life. 
bind us together in one body as your holy and whole family. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these your gifts, that we might know the presence of Christ at this table and in the world. Amen. Amen. We remember that Jesus gathered at table with his friends long ago in a meal that is both then and now in the elements that we bring in the lives that we live in our commitment to gather at this table to give thanks and remember. And after they had eaten all that they wanted, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. And he broke it, and he shared it with them. And he said, whenever you share the bread like this, I'll be there. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he poured it out for them. And he said, this is the cup made with my life for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you share the cup like this, I'll be there. So friends of Jesus, we gather at this table to receive, to remember, to give thanks, and to be refreshed. Communion this morning will be brought to you wherever you are seated. If you're in the building, if you're at home, you might choose to pause the video and go and get your elements ready if you don't have them ready yet. Heidi and myself will be bringing the communion elements around. We'll invite you to use your pew bags. There's sanitizer and Kleenex in there. When we come to you to use the sanitizer, take off your mask. We'll serve you both bread and the little cups again, a little bit of nostalgia for everybody. And then you can sanitize and remask once you're finished. We'll be gloved and masked and bring the elements around so that only one or two people are unmasked at any given time. So Heidi, I would invite you to come.
I'll invite us to join together. In God of all creation, we give thanks that bread broken brings wholeness, that the cup poured out renews, that time spent with the risen Christ and with one another is gift and grace. Send us into this world as a blessing. May we live as signs of your love. We ask in the name of Jesus, who taught his friends to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is this day. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'll invite us to join together in singing number five from the Voices United. First three verses, all earth is waiting. So watch what happens when we change the light in this season of Advent. I'll invite you to join in the words of sending forth. They're on screen again to read in that larger white font. The one for whom we wait is known to us in every heartbeat. When we say yes to God, amazing things happen. The one for whom we wait can be seen in the face of all with whom we share our lives. When we say yes to God, unexpected things happen. May God's angels surprise us with peace. May hope caress our lives. May love open new possibilities for healing travel well. We will travel by the light. Amen.